This company is making tablets for the visually impaired. The dot pad lets visually impaired users play games and browse the web. On the world's first smart tactile graphics display, it uses AI to analyze images and split them into segments, reproducing them on a tactile screen so blind people can read and interact with them. Users could access more than 2.2 million apps including entertainment from TV shows to comic books, and for the first time, anything on the internet. Just like a standard tablet, you can zoom, tilt and rotate images, or take a picture and reproduce it on the tactile display to see what's there. There are huge implications for work too. Visually impaired people can struggle to interpret graphical material such as graphs, charts or diagrams. Tactile books are expensive and often hard to come by. And audio descriptions don't always work for complex topics. On the DOT pad, they're easily and quickly accessible. DOT is a World Economic Forum technology pioneer 2023. There are 285 million blind and visually impaired people worldwide. Meanwhile, Google has released a feature that helps blind people take selfies. Guided Frame tells you to move your phone up down, left or right. Then the phone vibrates when it's in the right place. While Honda has created shoes that buzz to tell blind wearers which direction to go. How else can tech help visually impaired people?
what we say typically as feminist economists is that there is no such a thing as gender neutral policy or economic policy. And therefore, we have to pay attention to the working of the economy, the policies, the economic policies, the social policies, businesses choose to pay attention uh, to how the, they reproduce gender inequalities and to um, help address these inequalities. We believe that via policy and via different initiatives, uh, the economy could work uh, towards equality. Gender inequalities combine and reinforce other inequalities. And, and then if, if left on their own, the economic system reproduces these inequalities. So, so it's, not, uh, it's not that inequalities exist outside the economy and then the economy works in, in vacuum. Let's go to Economics 101. The idea, uh, and it's a very um, liberal one, is that, um, is that wages reflect productivity. So as long as you are paid your productivity, your, in fact, marginal contribution to the productivity, that's fair. So the wage gaps would have a fair side, let's say, no? and an unfair side, which is discrimination. The point is, women, we are more and more educated. It's very hard to claim that we contribute less to productivity, or that we, although it is the case in very many places, we work less hours for pay. Typically, we work more hours when the unpaid care work is, is added. But setting that aside, even if we adjust by productivity and by all these things that could justify what we observe, the gender wage gaps remain. So there is discrimination. things that um, what the decisions made in the private sphere are private. No? So, so this idea that, that we shouldn't interfere. No? But there is interference. If uh, a young family has to decide who takes care of the children and who is in the labor force, well, the one that is going to be out will be the, the one who is better paid, and typically that's men. So not only you have wage gaps, gender wage gaps, and these are in, unjust, they send the wrong signals because they send the signal that women should stay home and, and men should go out to work for pay. But if you provide families with um, uh, affordable and typically um, public care services, then that conundrum does not exist. And maybe we get women out in the labor force that can prove their value and perhaps the, the wage cuts we see can narrow. Mm -hmm.